hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is tashina it's really nice having you back with me in today's video i'll be sharing from my notes uh, a bit of my channel of experience and what i found to be a certain way so let's get right into it so first and foremost china is very very far from jamaica it far bad it is very far so one wants to think about it really well if it's going to be something that they'll go for since it's so far but i mean it's worth the journey right so some of the things that stood out to me i mean you would have heard that prior to coming to china that persons will just take your pictures and sometimes persons will stare right hearing and experiencing this is somewhat different in the sense that it can become annoying especially you know if you and the persons i make four back in jamaica yes me i make four me i not supposed to make four right and you know so once you somebody i make four you just stop look no that not i'm right here so them still look so they still continue to look and to stare and, and and some obvious stares can i tell you some very obvious stares so much so that you'd be like feeling a little self-conscious right but that's how they are um over time you get used to it to somewhat but it's annoying at other points in time also you'll have persons who will want to come up to you and want to take pictures these are the more open one you know probably haven't seen a foreigner in a long while or so and or probably never seen a foreigner before because you do have those um what's the no the country country part probably and persons may not have as many foreigners there or they have never seen any anyway so there there's that you'll have the friendly ones they'll try to make conversation with you and of course you don't know the language or if you do know a few words and phrases like myself after what they are saying you won't understand so that's a thing to note also i mean this was a very funny thing. Like in my very first city I, I, I came to in China, my apartment at that time did not have any balcony where we hung clothes. So what we would do is, um, or what persons did, so a lot of Chinese, what they were accustomed basically in that city that I see, is that they hung their clothes on the railings, the window railings, basically. And you know, breeze blow, your clothes blow away. Um, I guess I can give you a story time about this at some point in time. I don't quite remember now if any of my clothes blew. Blow, yes, 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 I remember. But anyways, so it, that was a little weird. I mean, it was a little weird for me because I'm mostly used to hanging clothes on the line. And if we're putting clothes on fence per se, that's hardly done for what I'm used to that is. But I get that different places. In Jamaica, you do have persons who hang on the, on the, on the zinc fence or they hang on their, depending on the, the load, the amount of clothes, you know, the line space might be full and they have to hang somewhere else. But that was a thing here. You hang outside of your window. And funny enough, that was the very first um, and the only experience, I guess that employer was pretty cheap. That was the only experience where I didn't have a balcony to hang my clothes as far as I can recall. Yes, you had to hang it. So I would hang it on the hanger and then put it on the railing out at the window because there was a railing so you could hang the hanger on. And of course, blue breeze blow too hard, it gone. So you have to be, you have to be very mindful and watching if rain is going to fall, that type of a thing. Breeze a blow too hard, you want to ensure that your clothes not blow it too far. Um, so a big part of this culture is that they are very indirect, right? They are very indirect, meaning 
um if they have an issue with you for example most times they won't come to you directly voicing their concern they're going to tell somebody else and somebody else is going to tell somebody else and it might end up come to you through a grapevine situation like that or them just really not tell you and you know you can pick up vibe because sometimes we would say as jamaicans you know you just feel the energy something just off my spirit just not take that one day something to that effect so sometimes you can feel because a part of understanding language and communication and culture is also understanding body language so although there may seem or there is a language barrier you'd find that Sometimes you can pick up on the cues, the body language, how they're looking at you, how they chat, 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 chat. So the point of which I'm saying, they're very indirect and they, they like to say face. So what you find in a case like this, a lot of lies are told to conceal the truth or their truth, right? So a lot of lies are told. They're not very direct set of people. Um, I don't particularly fancy this because I would like to think I'm a pretty direct person and sometimes going around the one bullet with a corner, corner thing, yeah, I can't really be bothered with that. Um, sometimes I understand though that tactfulness is needed in different situations. However, them just indirect. Next thing too is that them chat. No. Um, this also exists back home. But at least, you know, if, again, and, and these, I'm, I'm referring to has to do with a lot of social cues. They don't know social cues, social etiquette, and all of these things. They don't know or they don't practice that. I don't find where they are practicing that compared to how we back home, like, you know, we are culture too. So you'd be standing there and say for example my ear style do up now it's a little of course different from how they will comb their hair they'll stand right beside me and they'll be talking because of course language barriers so they assume some of the time you don't really know what they're saying and because you don't know the language you can't pick up on anything but like i mentioned there's just more to a culture and language you can understand the, the you know over time you'll understand when they're them are chatty you gotta understand when they are chatty really so they do a lot of that um there are a lot of children or younger persons in work environment too so sometimes the maturity level isn't as high what i would say is that they're not very emotionally intelligent in the sense that separating your personal feelings and that of your profession and what require of you as probably a leader in your profession there everything intertwines so in other words if they don't like you you know you're going you're going to see it in the interaction if if it's your supervisor or somebody you're working with they're not very emotionally intelligent people and them can't take pressure one thing they cannot take pressure so if they're pressured and these are the locals and in our context now so if they're pressured they're gonna want to in turn pressure you even when whatever the circumstances of the pressure or what cause it has nothing to do with you that's just a way of their thing them, them can't take pressure i always say pressure bus pipe tj or one of them yeah so them people can't take pressure mm -mm. them can't take the one bugger problem and this also segue into sometimes you may go to um or i would have had the experience going different places asking questions and you know instead of them finding out if it is that they themselves don't know they'll basically tell you a no no or this can't be done and um i think it's a sense of laziness too and i don't think it's just here because even within our society this type of thing exists where somebody feel like said them not really want to find out yeah then just give the info them they know and then just leave you hanging like that so here you aren't given proper explanation if it's a no they're, they're not gonna tell you um you have to dig they don't proactively tell you that okay no you can't do this because you need to do this first 
you have to inquire and then whoo, it's it, it's luck on your part if you're given the proper explanation because I make to understand that you know how we communicate in the Western world in Jamaica it's a lot different um, so this is would be probably one of the big thing um, communication and it's not just a language barrier it's a matter of understanding too and all of that um, what else can I mention make mention to let me see so oh, yes um and you'll realize that some of what i've mentioned we can compare it to our society and we might find a little bit of this there too so them talk loud like aggressively loud back home they talk loud you know but you'll you'd know that when a loud is a big argument or you know somebody's a draw attention but like on a general without it being an argument without it be anything aggressive they just start talk very loud and aggressively <laughs> sometimes you'll even think that they are arguing i have recalled so many times when i have to look because to how aggressively and loud they're talking you would think fight got broke out and you know we are jamaica when fight got broke out we want to see what go on so yeah all right so food the food hmm i remember when i just came oh my god thank god for K kfc d nice i never really buy from kfc the first part it was mcdonald's so i remember when i just came and i was looking for chinese food nice nice fried rice just like how we would have fried rice back home in jamaica <laughs> listen let me tell you jamaican so-called chinese food is different from chinese food here um you know and over time you will find places that have okay food that you'd buy but the food oh my god the food is like the one that beats it every time because of course we are used to our nice mixtures and you know nice tasting and not blonde and boring but yeah and let me just say because we have to balance the playing field there are nice food here it's just a matter of where you are at but comparative to your home food not gonna be yard food nothing at all can be compared to your food back home so there is that all right so the language no in terms of the language barrier hmm. I'm, <laughs> I'm laughing because I would have, I, I just reflected on so many times. I was grateful for not knowing enough of the language because then I'll be saying some stuff. Uh, but the language is pretty complex in my opinion because it has characters. It um, So you have characters, it's very tonal. And I think it's opinion which is like it, it, it use all letters but of course in Chinese different you have different in letter sound than English too so the language I mean spoken Chinese is easier most of what I know would be from my students interacting with my TAs which are teaching ex assistants which are Chinese teachers so yeah but overall it is a pretty complex language why because it also have characters yes characters and almost everything is written in characters they do have below the characters i've seen so often the pinyin um wording of that particular sentence or word but i mean you can learn the language but it's complex in my opinion all right no this is something that we are never going to run away from wherever we are our skin tone you know there are a lot of misconception in the media here and oh my god it made the people in place be stupid foolish it causes persons to be a very um foolish right very foolish and as such 
that can get you upset a lot of the time. So let me just say, some things just, you're like, so you don't have a mind of your own to realize that this don't make no sense. So there are a lot of misconceptions being circulated and it, it, it's, it's a mixture of sometimes you have to laugh, sometimes you have to shake your head, you know, how you deal with it because it, it causes you to know wonder, okay, so people really exist with just suck up everything they're told, but we know this exists because this is the type of culture for it. But there are a lot of misconceptions, some of which cause persons to scorn you, think of you less than they are, which, let's be honest, we are all good in God's sight. Let me leave it there. But, you know, we as foreigners are seen as a scapegoat for a lot of things. Um, accountability is very little. Accountability, very little. Um, overall, their way of life is a little boring and blonde than we back home in Jamaica or in the Caribbean or in the Western, any of those countries, Western countries. So it's a little different here. I'm just checking my notes to see if I am missing anything so I can share. So there is also the thing when sometimes Chinese people assist you, you know, of course, you're where, wherever you're grown, I'm expecting that, you know, you show your gratitude. However, it's almost that it's almost like sometimes whenever they do something, you know, you have to do it in two folds or extra. Um, that happens sometimes, you know. And oftentimes these people don't really interested in you unless there is something that you know you and them doing a business or something. That's really the basis. Which I can't really say it's limited to their culture. So yeah, I can't really say it's limited to their culture. Um, what else did I find? Oh, I remember when I just came and uh, like i personally don't like bikes right and i remember when i just came and i tell you they have e-bikes they call it e-bikes which are electronic bikes and you'd see daughter son if they have animal animal on that bike you know father mother the whole family and i would be like oh my you know uh, at other time i'll see children stooping and i'm like this is dangerous but I soon learned that, I soon after learned that it's just their way of living and it's pretty normal to see that happening. This is one of the, well, one of their mode of transportation, which is pretty convenient and I think less expensive for them too. So this is a norm. You do have the bicycles, the trains and other mode of transportation, but just specifically referencing um the bikes because i don't like it and back home you know the idea i guess those bikes are motorbikes so i don't know these i guess can't go as fast i, I really don't know but i just never like the idea of bikes because there's nothing in the event of an accident there's nothing to bar off you being hit you're gonna get the full blown it all right so with that said i just shared a few things that stood out to me when i first came here in china so stay tuned for other videos thank you so much for watching bye